everyone. Welcome to Wednesday's edition of Take 5. Boy, just two days till Christmas. Uh, maybe your last day of work. Uh, I wonder how you're going to spend today. Maybe you're not working, but you have a lot of preparations to maybe still do. Maybe you have a few presents, maybe probably online still to buy. I know this is a much different Christmas than normal, but I really am glad that we are able to just take five minutes and take a breath from all of the things that we're doing and reflect a little bit on Scripture and how it applies to our lives, even right now in December of 2020. We've been doing what I call Christmas in the Epistles. And this day before Christmas Eve, we're going to look at some final words. We've been looking in Colossians and what the Apostle Paul writes, these million-dollar ideas about that baby in the manger, about he is the eternal God. He is the image of the invisible God. He is the creator of all things. And we've allowed those ideas to sort of get into our minds and say, wow. Um, and now we're going to see his position, uh, both among us in the church and really among us in eternity. Here's what he says. Colossians 1 and verse 18. Again, this is the baby that we worship. We're going to see his position in the church and in all eternity. And in a sense, why he came at Christmas time in the first place. Speaking of Christ, it says he is the head of the body the church. Church has its leaders, the church has its pastors and elders and others that all have to direct and manage the church, but ultimately that little baby would become the head of the church. He is the head of the church. It is his body. So think about your own role in church, wherever you are. You are a part of the body of Christ. Maybe you're a knee. Um, maybe you're an elbow, where you love the correct people. <laughs> maybe you're a tongue, maybe you have a good voice. Um, but all of that fits together. Christ is the head of that. Christ came to this earth to, in a sense, establish his new covenant people. And we know them as the church, and he's the head of it. Okay? He is the head of the church. He is the beginning, he started the church. And the way he started it, he was the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. So Christ came as a man at Christmas time. Thirty odd years later, he would be crucified and rise from the dead. He would be the first one to rise from the dead. And now everybody that's part of the church have that promise in them. They will rise from the dead. Eternal life, resurrection is our promise. Good Friday, Easter are huge. Christ was the first one to rise from the dead. In him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. Um, that's Christ. When you look at Jesus, know that the fullness of God is dwelling in him. Boy, there's some, some um, beautiful words from carols in these songs. As we sing the Christmas carols, maybe as you come to one of the Christmas Eve services, Listen to the words of the carols, and you will hear these words. Um, the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. That's a Christmas carol. And through him, this is why Christ came. God came to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. The cross is the emblem of peace, and yet Christmas is the initiation of that peace. God became a man so that eventually he could die for the sins of the world and reconcile two enemies, the eternal holy God and the broken, unholy creation. You and I are a part of that. And so to truly enjoy and um, establish the purpose of Christ in our own lives, we can't just say, oh, that sounds good. We have to say, I want that. We have to say thank you to Christ. I receive that by faith, your reconciliation, and now I live the rest of my life as a reconciled person to God and to the rest of humanity. That's why he came. I'll get cliche at the end now. The greatest gift that God gives us at Christmas time is his son for sure, and the gift of his son is reconciliation between us and a holy God. I hope you know that. I hope you've received that by faith. And then if you have, make sure you live your life thankfully, 
living in a manner of reconciliation. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's Christmas Eve. We'll end in a very special way, and then we'll be done for the year, and we'll start up Take 5 again in January. I'll see you. Have a good Wednesday. So long.